300 million years ago, Earth was the kingdom of giant insects. As time went on, they eventually went extinct, and then the dinosaurs entered the scene. But what if that never happened? What if these giant scorpions, worms, and dragonflies were still around today? And how did they go extinct in the first place? This is What If, and here's what would happen if the giant insects never went extinct. Okay, before we get to what our insects would be like today, well, first, we need to go back. The Carboniferous period, also known as the Age of Oxygen, ran from 400 million years ago to 290 million years ago. Super-sized dragonfly wannabes, also known as griffin flies, had wingspans up to 70 centimeters. They darted about, gobbling up smaller insects. The griffin flies were also 45 centimeters long. They had huge eyes and vision like a hawk. Their spiny legs helped them grab their prey. Then there was the Mazatheros. It was 55 centimeters long and had six wings. It had two pairs of regular wings and an additional pair of winglets. But its scariest feature? It had a beak-like mouth equipped with a sucking pump. Like a vampire, it would pierce the tissues of plants and drink their juices. Maybe in the modern day, it would go after you. But we'll answer that later on. There was also the giant millipede, Arthropleura armata, entering the room at two and a half meters in length. Luckily, this guy is strictly vegan. He dined on fruits, leaves, and seeds. And watch out for these massive scorpions as big as tennis rackets. You do not want to be on the wrong end of that stinger. But hold on, what made these insects grow so big in the first place? The answer lies in the weather the Earth was having at the time. Our Earth doesn't have a lot in common with the Permian period, except maybe the heat. Let's be real, the planet is heating up and we need to do something about it. And I just might have the solution. I'm talking about Solar Slice, a revolutionary way to combat climate change. How does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. You sponsor a slice of a large-scale solar farm, adding 50 watts of solar power to the grid and reducing harmful emissions. Then, you track your impact in real time with their app. You'll earn eco points as your slices generate clean energy, which you can use to buy more slices, plant trees, or fund other meaningful initiatives. If you want to expand your impact further, you can share your progress with others, create group initiatives with friends, or send solar slices as eco-conscious gifts. Help save the planet by checking out solarslice.com, where you'll find a link to their Kickstarter campaign. Your support will fund the construction of their first solar farm and the development of their app. Now, what else is happening during the Permian period? At the beginning of this period, around 350 million years ago, it was warm. And as warm weather does, it encouraged the plants to grow. Around this time, oxygen levels in the atmosphere were about 20%, similar to what we have now on Earth. Fast forward 50 million years later, massive forests have taken over and swamps cover low-lying areas. Oxygen levels, well, they've skyrocketed to 35%. Now, the high levels of oxygen in the atmosphere made the insects big. But how exactly? Well, first, you gotta look at how insects breathe. Insects don't have lungs like we do. They have a set of openings on their bodies called spiracles. These spiracle openings lead to a set of tubes called trachea, which run through the insect's bodies. Air enters the spiracles and passes through the trachea to deliver oxygen to all the cells in the insect's body. The more oxygen in the air, the more that can pass into the insect's body. Now, there was 35% oxygen in the air at that time, and this allowed insects to take in more oxygen, which allowed them to grow bigger. But then, 150 million years ago, something changed. Oxygen levels went up, but insect size went down. Why? Because a ruthless killer of insects arrived on the scene. Birds, which are, as you know, flying dinosaurs. These birds feasted on insects. They looked at the giant griffin flies and salivated. And the bigger the insect, the more likely it was to get eaten by a bird. So 
insect evolutionary survival strategy was to get small and nimble. The large insects went extinct and the smaller ones survived. Okay, so now that we know what happened to the giant insects, was there a way they could have avoided extinction? Well, the easiest way would be for the oxygen levels to go back up to 35%. Okay, the insects would get larger, but large insects would still be hunted by birds, which are in most cases stronger. So our insects need some better survival strategies. Let's look at the largest insects we have today, one of them being the Weta. It's 10 centimeters long and has been around since even before the dinosaurs. So how has it survived? By getting an island of its own. In the Weta's case, New Zealand. It lived here for millions of years without having to worry about any predators. But as a long-term survival strategy, it hasn't exactly worked out. Predators eventually came to New Zealand and Weta's now live in the Auckland Zoo. Okay, we need a better option for our giant insects. How about a supercharged stealth reproduction strategy, like the cicadas? After mating, the female cicada lays nearly 400 eggs. These eggs hatch in about six to eight weeks, and the young nymphs drop down, burrow into the ground, and don't come out for up to 17 years. Uh, that's definitely one way to do it. As an insect, if you make yourself scarce, no one can eat you. Maybe our giant prehistoric insects could try that. But where's the fun in spending most of your life underground? So there's one more option. We call it the chemical warfare strategy, and it's used by the lubber. Yeah, the lubber. A large grasshopper about eight centimeters long. Now, that's much smaller than our carboniferous ancestors, but it has some great survival strategies that we can use. Lubbers are great at picking up various poisons from plants, like onions or garlic, and they then make a poisonous broth that they can use against predators. Think of it as nature's pepper spray. When they meet a predator, like a bird or a rat, they eject their poisonous broth, creating a chemical cloud. Predators then gag and spit out the lubbers. And if this fails, they've got an internal toxin lined up. An unsuspecting bird that eats a lubber will vomit and then will never try to eat one again. Okay, so now let's see if giving these insects some survival tactics will work to stop them from going extinct. With the world at 35% oxygen and some internal toxins, yeah, the giant insects now fight off the birds. But what happens when the Chicxulub asteroid hits? That's the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Well, it's actually a pretty good thing for our insects because the biggest predators are gone and there's plenty of swampy, dying material for our insects to feast on. But what would happen to mammal and human evolution? Would we even be around? Because today, if our air became 35% oxygen overnight, that would be toxic for us. It'd cause coughing, <laughs> difficulty breathing, and in severe cases, seizures and death. But then again, if apes and then humans evolved in 35% oxygen, then our bodies would have evolved to function in that environment. Our cells would be supercharged, producing even more energy with higher oxygen. We'd be super runners and super swimmers, breaking all of today's records. And our brains, which use 20% of the oxygen we breathe, would have evolved to grow even bigger and faster. Okay, so now it's time to return to the modern day. What does the world look like? Well, if you looked out your window during the summer, instead of just seeing different birds, you'd see giant griffin flies and six-winged insects buzzing around. Would these giant arthropods attack you if you went outside? Well, during some period of evolution, there'd likely be a bunch of large winged insects that attack humans, especially those pesky griffin flies. But remember, we humans are no pushovers. During different time periods, we'd have likely developed weapons to fight against these giant insects. During the Stone Age, maybe it was a sharp rock. Today, we'd probably have special bug sprays or zappers to fight them back. Sooner or later, just like the birds would have evolved to leave the giant insects alone, the giant insects would steer clear of us humans. Now, in addition to giant bugs flying around outside, we might have giant cockroaches and giant spiders as well. If these insects developed chemical defenses against predators, well, that could enable them to stay giant. 
But without these defenses, they'd be better off being small and nimble. So maybe mosquitoes would stay small. Ugh, with giant cockroaches, you'd need a whole new level of pest control to keep your kitchen safe. Now, if bugs were giant, would humans have evolved to be a whole lot bigger too? It's possible we'd be bigger. There's evidence to show that oxygen levels were rising from 15% to 19% when the dinosaurs first appeared, so there could be a link, but only if it gave us an evolutionary advantage. Advanced technological know-how, I think us humans will survive a world with giant insects, but what if it wasn't just giant insects? What if the other giants from our ancient history, the dinosaurs, never went extinct? Well, that sounds like a story for another. Subscribe.